Holy Thursday, Mark 14, 22 through 26. I had a tough time saying that there. For a lot of us, Holy Week starts now. I mean, besides, of course, Palm Sunday, it, it kind of starts now. There's not a, a whole lot of us uh, uh, that uh, take the time to, to really celebrate uh, Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday of Holy Week. Some of us do, and that's good, but, you know, our lives get busy. And so sometimes uh, this, is, this is the day that it starts. It's good. It's good that it starts uh, for, for a lot of us here because this is the time in which our Lord institutes uh, his supper for us, for the troubling of burdened consciences, uh, for those who actually uh, need to be comforted and united with our Lord, not just in this spiritual way, uh, but in a real tangible, uh, real, true uh, way. And I know uh, I, I, a lot of us, even still now, I'm a pastor, and this thing's a mystery that we receive here. And everything rational in my brain wants to say that this, this can't be what, what God has, has promised that it is. And, and yet, in faith, I receive what my Lord has placed in front of me. Because our Lord actually does things. He brings salvation. This is the culmination. This Lord's Supper is the culmination of the Passover feast. And you guys know your history well enough. The, the first Passover feast was the very thing that uh, enabled the, uh, the Israelites to, to be freed from Egypt, right? Because you, you, you had that blood and you, uh, the, the lamb and you sacrificed it and you painted the blood over the, the doorpost and the angel of death went over. We all know that story. But the Passover feast was celebrated for years upon years, centuries upon centuries after that. And it wasn't just a remembrance. And this is what we have to uh, understand as well. When our Lord speaks, especially in Hebrew and especially in the Old Testament of this remembering, it's not just this intellectual, I'm remembering back in the past, but this remembrance is this incorporation into. So that when the Old Testament Israelites were having and celebrating the, uh, the, the Passover feast, they were incorporated into the very God who saved them the very first time. So it was, they were one with those Israelites that actually walked out of Egypt. Now our Lord is bringing all of that to a culmination. No longer do we have to sacrifice any more lambs. We've got the true one, right? The, the true Paschal lamb who has come. And that's what our Lord actually gives to us. And this goes back again to what we talked about on Monday with the uh, Annunciation of our Lord, with the Incarnation of our Lord, with the, the fact that our God is not unaware of, of, of our fleshiness. He didn't come to save us from our humanness. We are human, and we've got ears to hear a word proclaimed, and we've got skin to actually feel baptismal waters upon us. We have tongues and mouths to, to eat and to drink. And that's the way in which our Lord does these things. He incorporates his salvation, brings his salvation, the cross, to us in these vehicles. So when he says, this is my body, given for you, it's the very body of Christ. And this is my blood poured out for you, it's his. And don't ask me how, but how doesn't matter. What matters is whether or not our Lord gives what he promises. He always has, and he always will. So tonight, when you celebrate the Lord's Supper, or maybe you'll do it tomorrow, or hopefully, at the very least, you'll do it on Easter Sunday, Know that this is the way in which our Lord is bringing himself to you, here in time and place, delivering the cross from all the way back 2,000 years ago to you here, wherever you're at, in whatever sanctuary you are, so that you might receive Jesus, your Savior, and his salvation for you. Thanks be to God.